Rick. Happy Tuesday, Megan. Here we are on a gloomy Tuesday, getting a little it's break kinda, from I know. the sun, which it's is nice. nice, isn't it? It almost feels like fall. It I is fall. Like, <laughs> I feel like I've been in the office my whole entire life. I've been here since yeah. uh, 8 30 this morning. And I was here because, you know, David Romero, he owns our company with his brother Phil. And it was, uh, I've been with them since uh, 99. And we time. filmed a little little show here today. Very cool. I can't wait to see it. I know. It was it was fun. I think I um, have so much practice doing this every week that I wasn't even nervous. <laughs> there you go. You're a pro. There you go. Give me a TV show. Sign me up. That's right. We're on okay. The hunt. So here today we're to talk about dispelling some myths and some rumors about the upcoming um, doom and gloom of the potential of all the people that are in forbearance in Orange County. We've talked mm -hmm. about this quite a few times in the past about forbearance. And yeah. then you're going to talk about some uh, numbers that came out today with uh, the case mm -hmm. show report. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Uh, so last week, I promised to get these numbers. So we went on the relentless pursuit of the truth. So we called our title company and our friend, Stephen Thomas, with the uh, OC housing report. And mm -hmm. he's a quantitative, you know, scientist number cruncher. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> he's like a trend uh, yeah. watcher. He knows what's mm -hmm. going on. So put, we put together some information here. So I'm going to share it mm -hmm. with mm -hmm. the public because um, this is what we promised to do. So uh, the from the title company, they sent us information from the Institute of Public Policy, which is a legitimate place to get information from. And this is just um, for the month of September. So the month that we're ending right here and now. So it's very current mm -hmm. information. Mm -hmm. So this is for Orange County. Okay, so how many people are actually delinquent on their house payment? There are um, 640 houses out of the approximate 850,000 that um, are showing as owner occupied. So these are not mm -hmm, mm -hmm. property. So Eric at our title company did a good job of breaking this down for us and really uh -huh, giving uh -huh. accurate information. So that's about 0.0075% of the housing owner occupied population in Orange County is considered distressed. You know, they haven't made their, their house payment. Mm -hmm. And so out of these 640 properties that are in distress, um, 61 of them approximately would not have enough equity to have a regular home sale. They would have to be a short sale where you sell for less mm -hmm. than, mm -hmm. than what's owed. So the rest of these, I mean, we don't know what's going to happen in these 640. They could continue to try to work things out. They could sell. Mm -hmm. um, there's a, there, they could become current. Uh, mm -hmm. But that is a very small percentage of the housing inventory that's in some kind of hot water. Got it. Uh, I was, when I was talking to David this morning, um, mm -hmm. he said that there's something to look out for if you're selling a property that has had um, some kind of forbearance that they, that a lot of homeowners were thinking that this uh, amount that they were not paying was going to be added on to the back of the loan. Mm -hmm. But so, in some cases, this amount that they were paying turned into a second loan and has been sold to really uh, I haven't yeah, seen that. Yeah, service wow. company. So let's wow. Say, wow. I know I was kind of like, what? Mm, so damn. he said at the beginning when you open escrow, you know, or before you even open escrow, when you're just working on a property, you pull a preliminary title report because you want to see what in the heck is going on here. And right. he said everything looks cool, everything is what everybody thinks. 
And then when you go to close, they pull another, just like you pull credit reports to make mm -hmm. sure nobody's co-signed for a motorhome or something before they close escrow. Yeah, right. <laughs> um, and so they pull another uh, title report and then all of a sudden they'll see this other lien. Like it's coming up as a second lien. So that's a mm. word of um, caution to my realtor friends out there that if you know somebody's in forbearance, try to figure that out ahead of time because that is a bummer. Right. Well, you know, on the on the topic of forbearance, so and I think we talked about this in the past, forbearance is not forgiveness. Right. And so people confuse the two sometimes. So in the event that let's say though, Megan, that there was never a second mortgage added on to cover that amount of that forbearance, mm -hmm. if they are still in forbearance, even without that second mortgage, whatever they did not make in that payment will be added on to their loan payoff for payoff purposes at close of escrow anyway. So right. Right. Yeah, it's not forgiven. Right, exactly. Yeah. I guess they just had a they didn't realize that it would be another lien. Yeah, that's weird. I haven't seen that. Yeah, that's weird. that's interesting. And it's a different yeah. servicer. Right. That's messy. I have to dig into that. I'm not I, I I'm trying to get my head around that one. I don't know that one yet. Huh. Yeah, I'll have to do some more homework on that. I guess it's like on the hot plate right now. Um, yeah. And then I wanted to also address mm -hmm. how many delinquent renters there are in Orange County. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. There's some home buyers that are super hopeful that um, there'll be a surge of inventory because landlords just can't take it anymore and they're gonna sell their rental properties. So just so that other that people know, I'm not a tax person, I'm not allowed to give tax or legal advice, but when you sell a rental property and you don't buy another rental property, that means you're not doing it in exchange, then you have to pay taxes on the amount of capital gains that you receive mm -hmm. as a result of the sale, which is a lot of money. A and, lot of time. I mean, it could be up to 30% of what you, mm -hmm. you know, bring home just depending on what your individual situation is. So it's a pretty big deal for someone to decide to sell their rental property, but there's going to be- yeah, there's going to be a portion of people that just can't take it anymore. And maybe they've made enough mm -hmm. in the last two years in equity that they say the hell with it, just sell and I'll pay the taxes. So here's the number. Mm -hmm. There are approximately 64,732 rental units in the County of Orange that are behind on their rental payments. Mm -hmm. And this doesn't tell us in this report whether those are, you know, apartments, condos, townhomes, that sort of thing. Mm -hmm. um, and this is as of September 24th. So this number, the 64,732, it represents 14.6% of all the renters in the county. And um, from those... Uh, from that number, from that uh -huh, 64,732, uh -huh. 37% of them are one month late, 29% of them are two months late, 13% are three months late, and 22% are four months late. So that gives you kind of a breakdown. It's sort of even in, in all the tiers of lateness there. Yeah, I, that's actually an interesting number. As I'm, as I'm talking through this with you, I would think there's a very high percentage of those homes, I think, that are rent, that are apartments. Because you look at, for example, just for an example, Irvine Company. Right. They're the largest, you know, renter or landlord in all of Orange County. I mean, I've got to believe that just the Irvine Company alone on their apartment communities probably has 10 or 15,000 units. Right. Right. Or probably more. And then not to mention all the other apartment communities. So I, I don't know how many of those are single family or or multi, like a investor units versus uh, apartment complex types of uh, tenants. We don't know that. Right, I know. I just tried to look like yeah. how many apartments are in Anaheim. How many apartments are in Irvine? And I'm not- Let me see if I can get it for you too. I, I would think that, although I don't know the number, we could research that certainly, but okay. I would think that probably 80% of those units are gonna be actual apartments. So Let's just for an it. example, the Irvine Company owns 65,000 units. That is not too far off. Yeah. 
good for them. So that gives you just some information on, you know, mm -hmm. what's it's good stuff. Yeah, it is good stuff because numbers are, I mean, you can't really say numbers don't lie because it just depends on how you present the information, right? Right. <laughs> it depends on right. the presentation, but those that's a pretty straightforward presentation. And mm -hmm. um, I like it. I, yeah, I think those are number the numbers to watch. That's interesting. I never really thought about that. Um, but that's a good, that's a good point. Yeah. So that's tell me what did you find out today. Well, Case Jiller, as you know, is kind of like the the benchmark of what's happening in the housing market with respect to uh, home appreciation. Mm -hmm. They released the report this morning for for July. Um, so for the month of July, and this is nationwide, one point. 6% increase for the whole month of July, which is 20% increase year over year. That's mm -hmm. the largest ever, year over year. So if um, I some, bought a million uh -huh. dollar house in uh -huh. last December, it's probably worth a million two now. It is. Yeah, yeah. I think in some cases a lot more. I mean, don't forget yep. that's a national average. Some, some markets are crazy. I mean, some markets are at 30%. In right the country and it all depends like you know what price range you're in too obviously you know probably mm -hmm. the the uh, lower price ranges had a really huge jump you know mm -hmm. for sure think. yeah i think across the board it's a pretty big jump but yes i think you know the middle of that market you know the we talk about the slot the 600 to 800 thousand dollar price range mm -hmm. they're that's the most active price range Right. right. I don't even think there's so. a six hundred thousand dollar price range anymore. <laughs> it's terrible for poor, these poor people. Yeah. But, but yeah, yeah, so I mean, I think um, when when is the Fed going to talk about rates tomorrow? Well, they they talked about it last week. They're not going to raise rates. The, the, there's there's a lot of topics on the table with respect to the direction of the rates, and partly it's tapering. And the right. part, other part of it is right now it's a rate of inflation. Right. And so as inflation escalates a little bit, that's going to put pressure on rates to move up a little bit to, to kind of bring that down. Right. Yeah, I think inflation is, um, I don't know. I mean, it is what it is, but I don't think it's going to be out of hand. As long as we're right around that 2% range, mm. I think we're going to be just fine. Two, two and a quarter percent, we're fine. Yeah. Uh, much above that, I think we'll start seeing more pressure on that inflationary number. But I think for right now, we're okay. I mean, people are, there's a pent up demand. Look, during the pandemic, the supply chain still messed up. Right. right? We know that. Yeah. And so as that, as that supply chain improves, people are going to start buying more appliances and so on and so forth, cars and so on. So that will drive that number a little bit. Yeah. 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 Well, good. Well, I appreciate our talk today. And um, we'll talk next week. And we'll see if you have a topic you want us to talk about just shoot me a message or give me a call and we will put it on the agenda. Sounds good. All right. Awesome. Thanks, Rick. Thanks, Megan. See ya. Talk to ya. See ya. Bye.